In the previous video, uh, we have created uh, this uh, skeleton, this uh, 3D demo grid, right? 3D demo grid, and we have created uh, this uh, skeleton, right? It's got the it's got the uh, middle skeleton, and then the top, and then the base, right? Um, so in the last video we were examining the quality of those uh, grids, right? And sometimes it's kind of uh, useful if we turn off the faults to and then examine the details of the grid. This is the middle skeleton. If I if I turn off the faults and then blow up the view, uh, I should be able to actually discover some of the problems created by uh, some of the problematic grids, basically. Right. This is a, this is a, this is the one example. This is another example. So so, if you blow up the view, you can discover some of these kind of uh, this kind of this kind of grids. These kind of grids are kind of examples of uh, bad grids. Right bad meshes. You basically have the grid folded onto itself, right? And this kind of mesh are going to create a negative volume. Once we actually create the, uh, create the, uh, create the, uh, well, after we have inserted the, the horizons, for now there's nothing inside of the horizons folder, right? Once we, after we have inserted the horizons and uh, divided the entire volume into multiple zones and layers, then we can compute the cell volume. And this, the cell volume at these locations are going to give us negative volumes. Right. So, so, so for this particular grid, uh, these kind of negative volume cells are relatively small. It's uh, just uh, very few of them. So for static modeling, it's probably OK, right? But if this kind of problem is extensive throughout the grid, then we will have to sort of go back and uh, uh, re change the shape of the faults and then regenerate the grids, right? But 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 uh, but let's 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 insert the horizons first and then divide the volume into multiple layers and zones, and then uh, we compute the, we can compute the cell volume. And if uh, this place becomes uh, if it, if if it becomes necessary, we can actually come back. To reconfigure the faults, right? And you can sort of, you can sort of guess, you can try to guess what those faults, what what are the name of the faults that are actually creating these kind of problems? Um, if I put the, if I put the, so if I put the faults back on, uh, it's actually the truncating fault. So the truncating fault is right here, and then the main west, main fault west the three, that's this fault here, right? It's actually the relation between these two faults that's uh, that's actually creating this kind of a, a strange or bad uh, bad meshes, right? You can sort of see that. So later on, we can actually try to uh, come back and then readjust the, for example, the truncating the shape of the truncating fault. Right? Move, maybe move this particular shape point. Maybe move this particular pillar a little bit to the north or something, and then which will allow us to actually um, adjust the grid in this particular uh, region, right? Okay. Um, now let's go back to the three D grid, three D window, three D window. Right. Um, in the previous video, we have created uh, this. Uh, this kind of surfaces, right? In the input, in the input pane, we have created the, the horizon depth surfaces, right? So, so, so here, are these these data are contourized. That's imported from the disk, right? We imported those uh, contour line data from the disk. You can sort of see the icon, right? Those they look like a contour lines. Let's change the name of the folder. Horizon, horizons. Uh, horizon contour contour steps okay and then uh, this is the horizon surfaces 
horizon surfaces test, right? Right. Um, so we're going to use those surfaces to actually create the horizons in the model. In the model, these are these are just the ordinary surfaces. That these are data structures that's uh, inside of the uh, input pane. Right. We need to actually get those uh, horizon surfaces into the model, into this particular folder, uh, into into which folder? That's the skeleton, right? Into this particular horizons folder in our three dimensional demo grid. Right. And, and again, we go to the structural modeling ribbon. Right. So we have gone through this pillar grading button, right? And then now let's look at the horizons button. As soon as you clicked on it, it's going to give you. It's going to give you this dialog box, right? So. If we look at the, the wheel tops, if we look at the wheel top data, let's uh, look at the wheel top C, uh, plan C, the wheel top data. Inside the stratigraphy um, uh, folder, we have a base Cretaceous top tabard, and then tabard one and tabard two, right? And then top knees, and then knees one, and then top E, right? So tabard one and tabard two are smaller horizons, a smaller sort of layers inside of the top tabard, inside of this top tabard zone, right? So, so, so the main horizon is actually base Cretaceous, top tabard top knees, and then top eve, right? These four are the main horizons. Top one and top two, top one and top two are kind of a, a smaller horizons or some smaller sort of interfaces inside of this uh, uh, top top to top knees zone, right? And then this one is a smaller horizon, a smaller interface between, uh, between the top knees and the top eve zone, right? So when we actually try to make a horizons, what we want to do is to actually create the horizons for these four horizons, four, four main horizons, base Cretaceous, top tabard, and then top knees, and then top E. So it's basically four horizons. We have a bunch of uh, buttons here. So this button is going to allow us to insert one horizon at a time, right? But this button is going to allow us to insert multiple horizons at, the, at, at one time. So let's click on it. Um, set number of horizons, right? Let's put it like four. For main horizon. Okay. So now we have four horizons. Oh. So now we have four horizons, right? And this particular column, let's call it input number one. Inside of this particular column, those uh, blue arrows are going to allow us to actually insert those uh, surface data, those surface data, right, surfaces, horizon surface data into these boxes. And then the wheel top data, the wheel top data can be inserted by using this set of uh, uh, blue arrows, right? So let's, let's do, this, do this particular uh, box first. Right, so base that corresponds to the base Cretaceous. Right, and then uh, the next one is actually the top tabard. So the ordering is like wrong in the in the in the folder. You can just adjust the ordering by by dragging them. Right, right. So base top tabard, right, and then the next one is supposed to be top eve, and then top knees, right? No, no, I still got it wrong. I think the next one is top knees, and then top eve, right? Top EV is like the, the bottom horizon, right? So that's the sort of the correct order. So base, top tabard, uh, base, top tabard, and then top knees, and then uh, top EV, right? Top knees, then top EV. So if we want to sort of point multiple items into the box in just one click, we can actually enable this button, this button, right? Enable, disable, multiple drop in table. If we click on it, and then, and then we can just uh, pick top knees and then click this blue arrow once, and then both top knees and top eve uh, goes into the correct box. Right. So we can do this thing for uh, 
to, to save some clicks basically right and then we also have wheel tops data right we also have wheel tops data we need to actually point them in, in here um let me collapse this folder the the wheel tops data right but the wheel tops data we don't want to sort of enable this button because uh top of two and top of one and then this one these are not exactly what we want to select we don't want to sort of select these three smaller horizons yet right so so let's just do that one one click at a time let's disable this button and then base criteria so let's point it in here right and the name the the name of the horizon has changed uh that's base criteria right uh, and then the next one is the top tabard, top tabard. And then the next one is uh, top knees. So skip these two and pick this one, top knees. And then put them in here. Put this in here. And then the last one is top eve. And here you can set the horizon type. Set the horizon type. By default, they are all just uh, conformable, but we know that base criteria is actually a erosional. It's an erosional uh, horizon, right? So let's change that to erosion. So if you if we if we set the set the horizon type to erosional, then any horizon if it actually comes up and try to actually go through it, it's going to truncate it, right? So if top tower tries to actually go above base criteria at certain locations, this kind of erosional type is going to automatically truncate the top top of the horizon. So it's going to try to do that. Um, another thing that might be useful is uh, smooth situations. So when we actually, so those surfaces that we just pointed in, those surfaces data, horizon surfaces data, they might be quite rough, right? They might be quite rough. Usually these kind of surface data or those kind of contour uh, data are actually coming from seismic interpretation. So it's actually possible that those uh, interfaces are kind of a rough, right? It's a kind of rough surface, uh, but usually it's actually okay, right? You want to actually preserve those roughness because those are actually coming from seismic interpretations. But if you prefer to actually smooth it, so 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 this this particular column will allow you to actually smooth that surface when you actually import those surfaces. But here we're just going to sort of use zero. We don't want to smooth it. Um, and then we have a, a few a few other tabs, right? Uh, settings, but usually this part of the tab is not changed. All the default, uh, all the default behavior is uh, is uh, pretty much all right. And then forts, forts. So inside of this forts tab, there are a few things that we might want to change, right? Um. So so so. If we look into this particular box, we have uh, a few defaults. So default for all faults, right? So if we, for, for now, default for all faults is kind of highlighted, right? That's blue. So all the all the kind of boxes, all the check boxes, and all those boxes are kind of configurations for default for all faults. So these these settings are going to be the default setting for all faults. And if we actually select this one, and this default setting is going to be applied to all the faults. Right. And then we have default for each fault. If you click on the plus sign in front of it, and then you can sort of specify individual faults. Specify the specify the configuration for individual faults. Right. For now it's grayed out because you have clicked on use default here. Right. But if we actually uncheck use default, then all those uh, all those uh, numbers can be sort of set for this particular NNE SSW fault. So if I change, for example, this to 50, then you can see that for NNE SSW, the distance is set to 50, right? So let's still change it back. To, uh, uh, let's still click on use default, right? Let's still click on use default. If we click on use default, then it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the setting for this part, for this thing. That's going to be applied to individual faults. That's going to be applied on individual faults, right? But if you want to change the configuration for one particular fault, that's that's where you want to do it. That's where you want to do it, right? And then underneath that, you have these four horizons that you just inserted. 
base Cretaceous, top tower, top knees, and top fever. And then underneath each of the horizon, you have forts. Right? So if you want to sort of change the behavior of the forts just for that particular horizon, that's where you want to do it. Right? Oh, no, I clicked on the wrong button. It's here, right? So suppose base Cretaceous, right? If you just want to change the fault behavior for just the base Cretaceous horizon, then that's where you want to do it. Right? Suppose, suppose, one, suppose uh, because base Cretaceous is uh, kind of an uh, erosional horizon, and uh, even though the faults can touch it, but it's not going to generate any kind of a you know, offset, right? It's, uh, the shape is actually very different uh, if we want to sort of look at it. Um, let's uh, let's go inside of this. Let's uh, this is a three D window, right? Let's look at. Uh, uh, let's dis display base, and then display top eve, right? Display this top and uh, bottom surfaces. Right, you can sort of see that on. Top Eve has this kind of huge variation, right? Some of them are actually caused by uh, faults, right? So you have uh, offsets along faults. But for for base Cretaceous, this particular layer, this particular horizon is pretty flat, right? Which is the indication that the faults are not really penetrating through it, or at least they are, the faults are not actually generating any kind of a, uh, offsets, right? So it might be a good idea to actually just deactivate, to deactivate all those faults for base Cretaceous, right? So so now let's uh, see, let's uh, let's uh, select all of them, right? For now, use default is uh, hold down the shift key and click on the first and then the last. Then it's going to allow you to actually select all of the, all of, all of those faults for base Cretaceous, right? And then you have to uncheck use default, right? And then for by default, active four is kind of checked, right? But we don't want to activate those faults for base criteria, so so we uncheck this thing, right? So now it shows that it's not active. All the faults for base criteria are not active, right? And this setting is done only for base criteria. So if you look into top tower, those things are still active. All the faults are still active. Right? The same is true for top knees, right? And then for top eve, right? And all those faults are actually set with the default behavior right um one of those buttons that's kind of useful is this particular button right that's sort of the sort of called, called distance right and you have a diff side with a checkbox in front of it. if you click on it you're going to have front and back there's two kinds of uh, boxes right if you move your cursor to the question mark it's going to tell you what this what these boxes are for right so 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 this is actually a fault right and then you have horizon right so the fault the the, the fault is going to cut through those horizons so you may have a some kind of huge offset across the fault right so what what patrol is going to do is that uh, it's going to pick a distance pick a distance and the distance is actually specified in this box it's going to pick a distance and then remove the horizon remove the horizon data within this particular distance from from the fold. And then it's going to try to actually interpolate the horizon data across the fold and give it like some kind of smooth shape. Right? So if the distance is like too short, if it's like this kind of thing, then, then this kind of interpolation is going to give you a very steep horizon kind of a, uh, a jump. In, on the horizon, but if you if you set the distances uh, uh, to a value that's kind of a more or less correct, then it's gonna give you a better shape for the horizon, which is gonna give you a better grid later on, right? So it's actually usually a good idea to actually pick those uh, values carefully, right? And uh, you have this button. Uh, toggle show front and back on the faults only possible if the three D viewer is active. So if you want to, um, so I'm not really displaying any faults, right? But but this button is going to allow you to actually look at the, where the front part and back part actually is. So you have two different colors. Yellow, front is yellow, right? Back is blue. So this icon is basically just indication. It's going to show you 
the front and back of the forts, basically, right? Um, so let's just uh, use the same value 100 for 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 both the back and uh, the front of the of the fort. Uh, segments. Uh, segments. Uh, it's got like a bunch of segments, but uh, anyway, it doesn't really matter too much. And then wheel adjustments, because we have both wheel top data and also those surface data, right? So how do we actually reconcile both kinds of data if there's any kind of discrepancy? So this tab basically allows us to to configure that, to configure that, right? By default, it's uh, across segments, right? So so those wheel adjustments are going to be applied across segments. It's going to be applied to the whole whole domain, basically. But if you don't want to make any kind of wheel adjustment, you just want to take the data from the surface. You don't want. You just want to ignore all the all the discrepancies with the wheel tops there. Then you can select none. Then you are, there's no wheel adjustment at all, right? Or you can just apply the wheel adjustment to the seals that's directly penetrated by the wheels, right? So 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 outside of those seals, it's going to be the data from the horizon surfaces, right? Uh, and then across segments, that's going to be you're going to apply this kind of wheel adjustment to all segments of the entire domain and then inside of segment only so 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 you're going to apply the the wheel adjustment to the particular segment in which the wheel is located right and then you can sort of set the influence radius so uh, 800 meters or something so, and then the kind of interpolation method so 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 this part of the grid uh, this part of the dialog box allows you to configure the the range of those uh, wheel adjustments right and how 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 to make those wheel adjustments basically, but for now let's just accept the default, and then let's just click on OK. And now we have a horizon folder, and we have four horizons underneath it, All right? But let's let's turn off this horizon surface depth map. That's the inside of the input pin. But let's display uh, base Cretaceous, and then uh, top E, right? Display these two grid surfaces. And then uh, let's also put on the edge. So by default, it's going to display the three different zones that's separated by these four horizons in different color. Right. So if it doesn't actually display different color for the different uh, zones, uh, you can go to the zone filter. Right. Underneath the zone filter, you now have uh, have three zones, right? Base Cretaceous to top tower, top tower to top knees, and top knees to top eve, right? If you right click on top uh, zone filter, and then you're going to have an option that's called Auto Color All Recursive, right? You can just click on that. Do you really want to apply new system generated colors? Yes. Right. Then it's going to auto automatically color the three different zones using different color, right? And, uh, and another thing that you may want to do is to actually click on this um, intersections, intersections. You have two directions, grid I direction one, grid J direction one, right? And uh, what you can do is to click on one of them, or both of them, doesn't really matter. Once you clicked on one of them, uh, let's turn off the let's turn off the horizons first, right? And then turn off the edges, and then you're you're going to be able to actually see the 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 the, the intersection through the three different zones for a arbitrary picked grid I direction. If you want to see the J direction, you can click on the J direction. You can go the J direction, so you're going to see the see the two. Uh, how 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 the two directions actually intersect with each other? Right. 
right and uh, if you want to see the forts you can uh, oh that's uh, that's gonna hide the but later on we're gonna sort of do a, a general intersection and then that's gonna allow us to sort of project the forts onto that kind of intersection general intersection sorry. and then uh, another capability that provides is this kind of player if you click on it then it's going to give you this particular player right uh so 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 you have like a one two three four five five different buttons here right what you want to do is to actually click on this the second button which is going to give you the so-called grid player grid player right and then all you have to do is to highlight one of those directions say grid i direction one right and then you can just play it Then the I direction is going to sort of automatically move across the entire model. And then you can sort of examine how the uh, horizon and how the different zones uh, kind of uh, you know, varies across the model. And then uh, you can use this button to manually shift the shift the the, the intersection to a different location and then as you click it's going to display the index and if you want to sort of move to a certain index directly you can just uh, sort of click on this triangle and then pick a particular direction right and uh, um maybe 58 is like a let's uh, go a few bit 42 right that's going to be sort of in the middle of the model Right. The same is true for the other direction. That's the grid J direction. Right? If you want to see uh, uh, the player to actually play the this particular direction, to move this particular cross section, you can just click on it. Right? Then it's going to move across the model in the other direction. Let's stop it. Right. And one of the things that people often do is to actually examine uh, the details, the details of the horizon surfaces, basically, by using these kind of cross sections. Right? And sometimes you may want to make some adjustments uh, based on your uh, kind of understanding of the local geology, that kind of thing. Um, and these kind of uh, I and J cross sections allows you to actually move to those uh, locations where you may have a problem. Right? Um, so so here you have a button that's called edit 3d grid right and then if you click on it it's going to give you this uh, uh tool palette right um so so by default it's going to display the the pillar right the, the pillar but let's let's click on this this button right as soon as you click on this button you have uh, those control points that you can adjust right so if you click on one of them, say this one, and then you're going to have those uh, wide cylinders, that kind of thing, which allows you to actually make adjustments. Right. So suppose I want to uh, drag the blue thing a little bit downward. Right. So maybe maybe the, the, the red zone is going to sort of have some kind of thickness in this region, maybe some non-zero sickness or maybe i drag too much uh, my 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 mouse is not sort of so responsive or because my computer is like too slow but anyway th this this uh, these things allows you to actually make those adjustments uh, along those uh, cross sections right and then radius it's going to tell you how how when you actually change one one point one control point it's going to affect like uh, three point three neighboring points basically right so as when you're actually dragging one of them, it's going to affect three neighboring points. Basically, it's going to have a, a radius of a three, right? But this number can be adjusted if you want to sort of make the influence zone larger or that kind of thing. And then uh, you also have the capability to actually smooth the entire area, to make the entire area smoother, basically, right? And then you also have this kind of a capability for peak remover. So if you have very rough horizons, 
this button allows you to remove those peaks by just manually clicking on that particular horizon surface. Right. So, so, so this is the edit 3D grid. So, if you see anything that's kind of a, um, so maybe, maybe, maybe let's um, uh, say let's just enable base cases. Right. Um, So smoother. So if you click, if you just click on some of the regions, then you, you can sort of see the shape has changed. Right? The, the, the surface has become shape, uh, become smoother. Right? You can sort of see that from those contour lines, basically. And this peak remover, if you have a, a very strong peak, you may want to uh, use this capability to actually remove it, right? That kind of thing. Um, Maybe it's not a good idea for me to actually do that. Let's sort of put it back on. So this undo button will allow me to. Is there still an undo? But I may. Okay, so so that's um, that's um, that's uh, that's how you can actually edit three D grid after you have inserted the horizons. All right, let's, let's close this box. Um, then let's put the edge back on. So for now, we haven't actually inserted those smaller layers, those smaller horizons into those uh, larger layers, right? We still have a, still have a top of the one, top of the two, and then this one, those kind of smaller layers inside of the uh, larger zones, right? And those uh, those things can be inserted by clicking this zones button. Right? Again, underneath the structure modeling ribbon, click on zones. Right. Um, In fact, this dialog box is actually quite similar to the to the horizons dialog box, right? The only exception, the only difference is that uh, here you have to specify the stratigraphic interval, right? Uh, the default, but the, the default is uh, from base Cretaceous to top Tarbert, right? But from base Cretaceous to top Tarbert, we don't really have smaller layers in between. Actually, it's from top Tarbert to Top knees that we have a uh, two smaller layers inside of it. So let's adjust this stratigraphic interval. Pick pick the right one. It's top top to top knees, right? So as soon as you selected the the the, the correct interval, this row is going to change. So it's top top now, and then this row is also going to change. Now it's top knees, right? And then we want to insert for this one. We want to insert uh, two smaller layers, right? So let's just uh, uh, use this thing. Click it twice, then you get like a, a two sets of data, basically, right? And then inside of this box, particular box, you, you can sort of see you have a ISO core data. It's going to use ISO core data to actually construct the smaller layers. Right. That's why we actually did the isocore surfaces from a previous video. So, so we have those isocore data here. Right. So, so, so the first one is going to be an isocore. Right. But, uh, but what's going to be the range of the isocore data? Right. It's supposed to f f go from top tower to, to, to. It's supposed to go from top tower to tower two, basically. Right. Top tower. Uh, top two to top top right? Top two to top top So that's the icicle we want to use to point it in there. And then the next one is horizon, right? Where do we actually get the horizon? The horizon is right here, top two, right? It's top top to top two, right? 
So, so top tower to tower two. And then the horizon is going to be tower two. And then the next ice core is supposed to go from tower to one to tower two, right? So it, uh, the next one is uh, top of one to top of two. And then the next horizon is uh, top of one. And then the next uh, ice core is supposed to go from top knees to top of one, right? Top knees to top of one. Right. You can also pick the color for each of the different uh, sort of newly created layer also. Right. And for this volume correction, uh, it's always better to actually click on yes. Right. The reason that you need volume correction is that sometimes, sometimes uh, the horizon data and the thickness data may have some kind of a, a conflict, right? Suppose the thickness data is smaller than the 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 the, the depth interval that you have specified by using the world world tops or that kind of thing, right? So how do you actually reconcile the kind of conflicts between the two sets sets of data? Volume correction is going to do that. It's going to sort of correct the 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 conflicts and how it's going to do this kind of correction, right? Volume correction. Here you have um, have a choice, right? Uh, so proportional correction means what? Proportional correction is that uh, if the layer has the larger thickness, then it's going to uh, absorb more of those uh, uh, th th thickness differences, right? So thicker layers are going to be going to have more corrections, going to uh, absorb more corrections. Right? Signal layers are going to absorb a less amount of those corrections. Equal correction that's going to evenly distribute. The kind of a thickness differences across all layers, basically, and non 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 correction, just no correction. Uh, build from build from base horizon, uh, top horizon. This kind of a uh, do I have a diagram for that? Um, um, yeah, there's there's a, there's a diagram here. So build from base. This is built from top, so you can sort of see all the layers are kind of parallel to the top. Right, this is built from base, so all the layers, are, the interfaces are going to be parallel to the to the to the bottom, right? And then this is built from top and base simultaneously. And then so so for starting, so the layers closer to the top are going to be parallel to the top, and then the layers that that's kind of closer to the base is going to be parallel to the base. So let's just use base horizon, right? Uh, let's accept all the defaults. And then you can also look at the settings, right? The settings tab is kind of similar to the settings tab in the uh, horizons make or make horizons dialog box. And then the wheel adjustment, it's uh, all, also very similar to the one in the in the in the horizon dialog box, right? And at this point, we can just click on OK, and then it's going to create those smaller layers, right? You can sort of see those smaller layers right away. Right? You have two more layers now. Right? If you want to recolor recolor all the zones. You can just uh, right click on zone view again, and then auto color all recursive. Right now, it's going to give you some kind of uh, coloring of the smaller layers inside of the larger zone. Right, and then let's do knees one. We also have knees one, right? Knees one that's between top knees and the top e. Uh, let's let's uh, let's click on zone again. Right, but now let's uh, let's move our stratigraphic to a stratigraphic interval to the lower uh, to the next one. So it's top knees to top eve now. Top knees to top eve, right? And here we want to insert just uh, uh, one of them, one of those things. So the ice core, the ice core data is going to be uh, knees one to top knees, right? And then the next ISO core is going to be top EVE to NIS1, right? And then the horizon is going to be NIS1. Right. And still, let's just accept all the defaults. And then click on OK. 
So now we see one more layer that's in between uh, the top eave and the uh, uh, top knees, right? And again, let's try to recolor them. Yeah. So it looks pretty good. Again, this kind of horizontal mesh is uh, still quite coarse, right? It's, uh, those interfaces are all geological. Those are geological interfaces, right? But when we do simulations, this kind of uh, this kind of very thick layers are kind of not accurate enough. We have to sort of in insert more uh, geometric layers in in between to make the make the grid finer, right? To refine the grid more, right? And that's called layering. Right, so for now, all the horizons and the zones are geological, right? But the layering thing is not ge is not geological. It's uh, it's actually just a geometric thing. So we can try to sort of do that by 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 clicking on the layering button, and then we can sort of uh, make adjustments here. So, um, why it's not allowing me to change the size of the dialog box? So the number of rules is actually adapted to all the different uh, uh, zones that you have created so far. Right, you have base Cretaceous to top tower. And then tablet two to top tablet, tablet one to tablet two, top knees to tablet one, and then knees one to top knees, and then top eve to knees one. Right, and uh, there are different ways for inserting those uh, geometric layers. Right. Um, so. Um, probably the most important one is this particular column. Right, so by default it's going to be proportional. It's going to be proportional, and number of layers is like set to one. But let's try to change it. Let's try to change it. Right, suppose we 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 change the first one to a follow base. Right, so if it's follow base, then all the different layers are going to be parallel to the base layer. In this case, it's top tower basically, top tower, and then we can conf configure the cell thickness. Uh, five is like too small. Let's give it like fifty because. Uh, this top layer is not really, uh, this top zone is not really sort of useful for simulations, right? And then, and then the next one, we are still going to do photo base. So all the layers are going to be parallel to the base layer. And then maybe change the thickness to like a four, right, to a smaller number. And then the next one, we're going to use proportional. But the number number of layers, we're going to change it to like seven, right? Just insert more layers. And then the next one is going to be, uh, let's change it to uh, photo base again. And then uh, the cell size, let's give it like four. And then the next one, uh, let's use fractions. Fractions. So fractions, so uh, it means we have three numbers separated by two comma here, right? Which means uh, the the number of numbers one to one right we have three numbers right so three numbers means that we want to insert three layers and then the thickness of these three layers are going to be uh, kind of a proportional to this thing so so one plus two that's three three plus one that's four so the first layer has is going to have one one fourth one fourth of the entire thickness and then the second layer is going to have two fourths entire interval and then the last layer is going to have one fourth of the entire interval right that's what this thing actually means if you want to insert more layers you have to add more numbers to it and then uh, the summation of all the numbers is going to be the denominator and then those individual numbers are going to be the numerator and each of the, the thickness of each of the layer are going to be uh, distributed accordingly according to those fractions basically. and then the for the last one we're going to use follow top Right, and then all the layers are going to be uh, parallel to the top layer. And then let's give the size like four. Four. 
Um, and then by default, it's going to build along the pillar, right? So, so it's going to try to actually follow the direction of the pillars. And then use a minimum cell thickness, right? If we want to so set the minimum cell thickness, so we can give it like a number, some number, right? Um, restore eroded, restore base. If you would like to actually investigate those uh, columns, you can take a look at the, these two buttons, right? Restore eroded zones, right? So if you actually choose them, it's going to try to extend the interfaces above the erosional surface on the top, right? And then build the grid. And then the, if you choose restore base, it's going to try to extend the layer to below the base layer and then try to sort of build the layers, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, let's just click on OK. So right away, you're going to see all the different layers now, lots of layers, right? Lots of layers. Um, if you like to examine the shape of those layers uh, closely, uh, you can also just zoom in and look at uh, how they are uh, distributed. Right? And then you can also play with those uh, configurations and try to understand uh, the result in those uh, layering. Um, Again, if you would like to actually look at those intersections, you can put the I direction or J direction on it, right? And later on, we're gonna sort of insert a general direction, a general intersection, basically. But before we actually uh, move on, let's let's take a look at the, a geometric property. Let's try to create a geometric property, right? So here you have a section that's called a grid QC. That's quality control, right? So, so it's got a button that's called geome geometrical modeling. If you click on it, it's going to allow you to actually compute some geometric uh, properties, right? So, method, let's uh, choose a cell volume, basically, right? And then property template, that's going to be bulk model volume, and you cannot really change that. Let's click on OK. So right away, we're going to see something underneath the properties folder, right? And then if you click on it, you're going to see bulk volume here, right? So now let's turn, turn off the horizons and turn off the edges. And then let's try to display the bulk volume. And then we're going to see the bulk volume. Right. So as soon as you click it on the bulk volume, make it highlighted, right? Um, you're going to see a context aware tab that's called grid property. You can click on it, right? If you click on it, you're going to see this set of buttons here. Uh, if you want to put the grid lines on it, you can click on this button. Then it's going to give you the grid lines or the grid line. And then if you want to adjust the color table, yeah. Yeah. Then you're going to see all the color variations, right? And you may want to sort of put on the color legend so you can see the distribution, the histogram, right? What's actually the variation of the... Uh, uh, let me use the big eye to actually display the entire thing. Right. So how do we actually find the sales with negative volume, right? How do we actually find the sales with a negative volume? Probably the most thing, the most useful button is the filter button. Again, let's uh, make sure that uh, the bulk volume is activated so we can go to the grid property tab, uh, ribbon. And then we have a property filter. It's actually a very useful button if you click on it. And this filter is going to allow you to actually select all the volumes with, with negative value, all the sales with negative volumes, right? Uh, so by default, 
use value filter is uh, kind of unchecked, right? Let's check on it. As, as soon as you checked on use value filter, the bulk volume becomes active, right? You can have active. And then you can select use filter, right? You can select the use filter. As soon as you click on use filter and then apply, you're going to see the bulk volume property becomes pink. Right. So so now the 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 minimum is actually a minus twenty two, and then the maximum is like a, this big, a very big number, right? Uh, suppose we want to just just display the sales with negative volume, then we can set the maximum to zero, right? And then we can click on apply. So now you see the bulk volume becomes pink, right? And then you're going to see this particular region, right? So, so that's the sh that's the sale with the negative volume, actually, right? That's the sale with the negative volume, right? Um, one of the useful things is to display is probably the Ford model. Let's uh, let's display the Fords. We're not going to display all the Fords. We're just going to display the truncating Ford. And then also the uh, main Ford West 3. Right. Okay, let's use a big eye to actually look at that. And you can sort of see this negative volume is actually a patch that's on the that's on the main Ford West 3, right? right. And uh, um, So the, if this kind of negative volume is quite extensive throughout your modeling volume, you probably have to sort of go back and redo the, the faults. Either change their shapes or change their connections or add more trend lines or configure those trend lines so that you can actually get rid of those negative volume uh, sales. But for this particular example, the negative volume region is not really uh, that big, right? It's a, it's a probably just a one or two sales. It's in fact, it's a, it looks like it's just a one, one sale, I guess. No, maybe it's two sales, right? So, uh, suppose uh, suppose we want to look at uh, all the sales with a volume that's less than say one hundred, right? We can just uh, change the max to one hundred, right? And then apply, and then it's gonna give us. All the sales with a volume that's kind of smaller than 100, right? You can see how useful how useful this kind of filter is, right? In terms of uh, detecting or finding any kind of problems in our in our uh, mesh, in our grid, right? And if you want to sort of turn for now, the 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 bulk volume is pink, which means that it's being used by a filter, right? And if you want to disable that filter. You have to sort of go uncheck all the boxes that you have checked, right? So uncheck use filter, right? So this bulk volume becomes uh, not activated anymore, right? And then uncheck this use value filter, right? And then click on apply or click on OK if you want to close this dialog box. Click on OK, right? So now it goes back to this kind of a display of the. Um, of the volume data, of the volume uh, property, right? And then, and then, if you want to look at the, the cross sections, if you want to look at the cross sections. Um, so, if we, we looked at this uh, I direction and J direction, those directions are kind of a, uh, uh, determined automatically by 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 patrol, right? But if you want to insert one more general intersection, you can right click on the intersections, right? And then you can sort of insert a random line. And then if you click on it, it's going to give you a general intersection, right? And then on this tab, you're going to see something that's called an intersection. It's a, another context that we're tab, it's called an intersection. Right? If you click on it, it's going to give you a bunch of buttons that's going to allow you to actually configure how 
to actually use this particular general intersection, right? And one of the things that might be useful is to click on this thing, visualize on intersection. So this intersection is going to become a screen which allows you to actually display all the different kinds of properties of the mesh. As soon as you click on this button, some of the buttons, either in the input pane or inside of the uh, model, inside of your model becomes blue, right? All those blue boxes can be checked to display onto this particular general cross-section, right? But for now, this kind of general cross-section is hidden by the volume. Right? You cannot really see it, or you cannot really see it completely. Lots of parts are kind of hidden by the volume, right? If you want to, uh, if you want to see something on the on the on this particular general intersection, you can cut it. You can cut the volume. So here you have a clip button. If you click on the triangle, it's going to allow you to clip either in front or clip behind. Right? If we click on, if you click on click uh, clip in front, then the other this half is going dis to disappear, right? And then if you select uh, clip behind, right, then this part is going to disappear. Right. And then at this point, at this point, you can you can see the cross sections by 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 checking on the horizons, for example, right? And then it's going to display all the horizons in different color, right? If you want to see the forts, it's going to display the forts in white color, basically, white lines as white lines. Those are kind of a, um, and then if you look at want to look at the bulk volume, right? It's going to display the color proportional to the bulk volume, right? And then at this at this point, if you would like to actually move this general intersection around, you have this button here called a manipulate plane, and it has a short keyboard shortcut which is an M. Right. So if you click on this button or you 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 press the M key on your keyboard, then you you you're you're going to be able to actually drag this plane. And as you actually drag this plane. You will be able to see the stuff that's kind of projected onto this plane changes as you actually um, move the plane around. Maybe let's move to a better angle to look at the, this uh, particular plane. Right? How how stuff actually changes along this plane. Right, maybe that's a good angle, right? So manipulate the plane, and then let's just drag it. And this general intersection also allows you to actually rotate to a different angle if you hold down the control key as you drag, right? So here I'm just dragging the, my mouse, hold down the hold down the left button on your on your mouse, and then just drag your mouse. It's gonna just move along this particular dash line, this straight dash line, right? But if you hold down the control key when you are dragging, then it's gonna allow you to rotate. You can rotate the plane. You can rotate rotate the plane to any kind of angle that you want to sort of examine. And when you actually, uh, if you try, if you have found a good angle to examine the data, right, you can go back to the little hand or press V V on your keyboard, right, and then you can just uh, rotate around and examine the. This particular cross section, right? So we're going to use this kind of capability again uh, after we sort of imported the seismic data, and this kind of general intersection is really convenient and allows us to actually examine the three D volume at any kind of cross sections, right? Um, yes, I think that's um, uh, uh, that's all the work we want to do inside of this particular video. And next time we're going we're going to try to actually um, upscale the wheel log data, and then try to try to get the wheel log data into the model.